Morning, everybody. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I think I had mic problems there. Hopefully, you can all hear me now. Hope you're all doing well. It's nice to be back with you all. It really is. It's been a long time. It feels like a long time. Um, to the point where I'm thinking, how do I start a 737 again? But that's fine. We'll figure it out. So, we're uh, super lucky today. We are going over to Lelystad in the Netherlands. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, from developer Papa Hotel first scenery we've checked out from Papa Hotel. I believe it's Papa Hotel's first piece of scenery, so it's really nice to uh, get to check that out. So we're starting things off in Edinburgh, and as you can see, it looks looks like a fairly promising start in Edinburgh. However, wait till you see this. Wait until you see this. Let me just click my mouse and take it wireless a moment. Wait until you see this. This is Lelystad. <laughs> So it's lovely in Edinburgh. We should have really gone the other way, shouldn't we? We should have maybe just done a bit of a crab to take off and uh, retreated to Edinburgh. But that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can get into Lelystad. <laughs> whether we can or not, whether I can or not, remains to be seen. But yeah, we got a 20, 26 knot wind by the looks of things. Uh, 320 degrees at 26 knots. Flipping heck. So what's the what's the runway? Runway zero five. Crikey, yeah, that is basically that's a crosswind, isn't it? Yeah, I've got a funny feeling we're going to become quite familiar with this little loop as we uh, <laughs> as we come into Lelystad. <laughs> you might be seeing it more than once. Just uh, just brace yourselves. I'll just show you the route quickly before we get too uh, too bogged down. So we are on Vatsim this morning. Although Edinburgh, although ground is online, I think we're the only people here, which is kind of cool. And we're starting from somewhere different. Normally, uh, normally I kind of park over here, sort of around you know gates one through to five. This is kind of what I consider. This is normally where I get sent as well when I land. So I kind of consider this my my general hangout. But I thought we'd come over to the southeast pier, just because we never do. Then we'll check it out a little bit. It also give us slightly different taxi instructions. I'm guessing it'll be Golf, Michael Lima, then. Alpha Delta. I don't know. It is runway 24 in use, so it's, it's going to be going to be one of those. Oh, hey, look, the wind's dying down a little bit. 20 knots now. That's good. Hopefully by the time we get there, it'll be smooth skies and tail... Well, not tailwinds for the landing, but you know what I mean. If we got in this morning, Frug's in. Morning, Frug. NGC and Thomas, good morning. So with that in mind, we better, uh, it's been a while, with that in mind, I better see if I can still start this thing, and we'll get in contact with Edinburgh Ground, which I believe is online, yes they are, and then we will see if we can get on our way. Excuse me. So, cold and dark here this morning. Slightly different view than we used to. We actually get to see right into the terminal building, which is quite nice. Quite nice. Although, I don't know, maybe the glass could look a little bit better. If I'm if I'm being really picky. If I'm being really picky, this this almost looks like there's no glass in there. Some sort of a glassy-like texture wouldn't go amiss here. And just some, like, maybe some wandering of these people. Animated people would just totally bring that to life, wouldn't it? As long as it's, like, decent animations, not just, like... The jank we've become used to. Hey, look at that. First time chat in Twitch and it's a bot. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, there's a bus. At least we get a bus over here. That's cool. Don't get to see any of that over the other side. Okay. Uh, yes, we are streaming on Twitch, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Sorry, Freak, what are you saying there? Do I know why it's hard to maintain center line and taxi? Uh, no. Especially during taxi, it should be easy enough. I like the way that bus is moving, by the way. Quite gracefully. GSX, take note. Um, uh, the only thing I can think of, Frug, are you, are you using rudder pedals or have you just got the... What have you got? What, what's your hardware? 
I mean, taxi should be easy enough, but like on the runway, once you start going fast, if there's a wind, obviously that wind's going to be hitting your tail of the aircraft. That's going to want to push your nose one way or the other. So I can understand why you'd need to correct, but, and that can be challenging, but taxiing, you should be fine. You should be all right taxiing. Oh, I almost forgot. Two seconds. Only thing I can think of, Farouk, is... Um, if you're using the Airbus side stick from Thrustmaster, I don't know if you are. And if you're using the twist functionality on the stick for your rudder input, there is a known issue with those, I believe. Um, where it kind of, the little sensor inside gets a bit messed up. I don't know them. You're using rudder pedals. Don't know. Don't know then. Don't know is the honest answer, Farouk. Sorry. Okay, right. Sorry about that. I forgot I was supposed to put a... Well, I wasn't supposed to, but I wanted to put a pinned comment in to uh, shout out for the dev a little bit for, for the scenery. Let's see if we can get this thing fired up then, shall we? Let's start with batteries. Arm the emergency lights. Now, let's, 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 uh, sort out our fuel for today. So according to Simbrief, we need 6,197 kilos. That'll do. And payload today. Only 140. That's fine. Three one seven five for cargo. So we'll split that fifty fifty front and back, shall we? Interestingly, when we came back from Rhodes um, last Tuesday, the front cargo hold on the plane was busted. So they had to put all the cargo in the back. And then the captain came out and he was like, hi, just to let you know, we're having trouble getting in the uh, front cargo section working. Don't worry. We've got all the bags on. They're all stuffed in the back. But we do need a load of you to move up the front to balance the plane. <laughs> and you can almost see like the nervous flies in the plane be like, oh my God, we're doomed. I did feel a bit sorry for them. All right, 1587 in the front. 1588 in the back. I also happen to be sat next to a nervous flyer as well, which uh, I've never had that before. I do feel quite sorry for them. Do 
did say because you do seem to know quite a lot about the plane are you a pilot I was like no no I'm not a pilot and I was like do I tell her that I do a flight sim YouTube channel I was like no I'm not going to say that either because that's just going to be a whole conversation I'd really rather not have with a stranger on a plane <laughs> morning Lee so yeah long story short I chickened out of it I was like no I just like planes But yeah, bless her, she was checking the weather. We landed into Bristol, took off from Rhodes, and sat on the tarmac in Rhodes. She was on her phone checking the weather in Bristol. Being like, oh my God, it's windy. It's windy. It's windy in Bristol. It's going to be really bad. It's windy. My friend's saying it's windy as well. It's been windy all day. And then we get there and it's fine. Still, it must be awful. It, mu it must be awful if you are genuinely like not happy flying and your only way to go on holiday, realistically, to a place like Rhodes is to fly. It must like really put a dampener on the whole holiday experience. Like the experience that I get versus what she gets. It must really suck. I did feel quite sad for her. There we go. Okay, so uh, I haven't done any GSX stuff, frankly, because I can't be doing with it this morning. I'm still recovering from a pretty nasty summit bug that we picked up um, while on holiday. And GSX being janky is the last thing I need this morning, so... Uh, right, what are we doing? Navs. One, two... Oh, stupid menu. Hey, Wyatt. You're new. Welcome on in. Nice to see you. Hey, Brian. Yeah, it's funny, actually, sitting next to that lady that's afraid of flying. It's, um... Obviously, being so into planes, it's almost like you just assume that because I'm fine, everyone else is fine. But I bet as a percentage of people that are on that plane, probably higher than you'd think, are unhappy with the fact they have to be on that plane. Still, we saw a few uh, while we were waiting to board on the way out in Bristol. We uh, we saw a few wobblers coming in, so it made me feel a bit better, actually, of... Uh, When you consider what I demonstrate on the channel sometimes, it made me feel a little bit better about um, about my own. Because they were rocking and rolling, some of them, on the way in, like, pretty close on final, like, wings going, you know, they, they were fighting with the control. It was quite a windy morning, in fairness, but... Okay, he's got that ground power. Okie doke. One thing I will say is that the lumpy bumpiness of the runway at Bristol didn't seem as extreme as it does on the scenery on the sim. So I don't know. Maybe it was the perspective I had as a passenger versus what you see out of the out of the cockpit window. It's a very different point of view, isn't it? That's the thing. Because like you're looking out of this tiny little porthole, really, as a passenger. You've got no real situational awareness. Okay, so allegedly we're cruising at 370 today, according to Simbrief. I'll put that in up here now, but of course when we do our perf in it request it. Occasionally I've noticed it comes in differently. Okay, APU. The EasyJet captain mate popped over yesterday, flew the Phoenix. Introduce random failures. I <laughs> dealt with it amazingly as you can imagine. Yeah. It must be lovely to have that level of knowledge and confidence in yourself to just be alright doing that stuff, you know? It's something I feel I certainly don't have. But then why would I? Like, messing around on a sim is vastly different, isn't it, to, you know, what you actually have to do. Yeah, he's 
get your dampener on. I feel like I'm all over the place this morning. I feel like just in general, the last few days, I'm all over the place. Like I was at work yesterday and I was like, when I left work, I was like, did I just like mess everything up today? Like constantly doubting myself. Did I do this? Double checking stuff, going back, doing the same thing twice. All right, FMC. Enter IRS position. What the hell? In it ref, there we go. See what I mean? Just making a mess of everything today. There we go, IRS is done, that's good. You're super impressed at the Phoenix. I've heard that, I've heard a lot of pilots are actually like, yeah, you know what, this is all right. I do wonder whether it's gonna be worth at some point upgrading the stick. Because obviously we've got the Thrustmaster stick um, that we use, which I know it's got Airbus written all over it, but it's not an Airbus stick, is it? I mean, crikey, it's basically a rebadged Thrustmaster stick that's been around for years. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, the price is right, you can't grumble. In fact, I'm gonna make a video about this stick, so I think it's uh, worthy of a conversation and it might help a lot of people um, just get going with the hobby. Because I think there's a, a natural tendency, like, in the early days of when you're looking at this sort of stuff, to think, oh, I need to buy all the stuff. But actually, that one stick can be all you need. Might not be the best at everything. You know, the throttle slider is nowhere near compared to a proper throttle quadrant. But when you're literally just trying to learn the systems of a fly-by-wire or whatever, do you really need all that? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, root E G P H. Ah, uh, what is the code? I've forgotten it already. E H L E, isn't it? Let's hope it is. Yay, there it is. <laughs> Jolly good. Let's do perfect request while we're here. Is there anyone else here yet at Edinburgh? I think I prefer it over this side. Seems like there's a bit more going on. You've got like the bus doing stuff over there. Actually feels like we're at an actual airport. Good views of the car parks. Yeah, I approve. I approve of the scenery over here. like it a lot. Yeah, 319, 321 is going to be a great addition. And it makes so much sense because it's like they've done the hard work on the 320. Not saying that it's literally just shrink and expand for the 19 and the 21, but they've got strong foundations to build those two off of, haven't they? So yeah, that would be very cool. Oh, let's load in this. Let's look at some charts. So we're doing the uh, TLA 6 Charlie departure. So straight out, make a left. Transition at 6,000. So we'll override that. Need to get a friend. <laughs> Why is it 737? Yeah, that's the way. Honestly, though, I don't know about you guys. Like, obviously, we're probably all different ages in here. Making friends as you get older, really hard. <laughs> like, God, ever since, like, we had kids and that, like, flipping heck. Like, A, finding someone to be friends with, and then B, having the time to maintain that friendship with young kids. It's like, forget it, almost. Like, I never see anyone now. I basically just sit in my shed and um, talk to you guys, to be honest. Okay, what was I doing? N1 limit. Let's sort out the N1 limit stuff. Uh, EFB. Morning, 65. Sorry, that's the only part. I couldn't be bothered to say a whole username. I am incredibly lazy. 
Okay, so we're using runway 24. That's fine. It is dry. Import the weather. So what's going on then? Flaps 5 for takeoff. Select attempt 44. Jolly good. Flaps 5. And what are we doing? 138, 139, 134. Trim of 4.8. That's what most people do. Very good. From now on, you will be 65. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can relate Thomas I can relate I remember when we first had kids like you know like my wife started going to like baby groups and stuff meeting lots of different parents mostly mums um, and then they would try and like fix me up with like the husband, like almost like set me up on a play date. I'm like, whoa, 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 like just uh, calm down. Like, <laughs> that's not my vibe. I'm sorry. It's like the friends I've got are bad enough. I don't need any more. Uh, what am I doing? I can't, honestly, I feel like I'm just wading through treacle today. Right, let's sort out our departures. That's what we'll do. I bet you're so glad you tuned into this stream. There we go. There's our departure. Straight out. Runway 24. Make a left. Easy peasy. And then in to Lelistad. We're doing ILS 05. I've forgotten what we're doing. Of course I have. Um, so there's no actual arrivals available. Fair enough. We're going to transition on Eknon. Do. Alright, let's just step through it. So, Edinburgh. This is our SID. There's TLA, that's the end of the SID. Then we start moving on up. So I think it wants us to get to 370, but I don't think we're actually going to get there. But that's okay. Then Eknon. LE118, got your number. Aspers. 103, 137. Don't know how you pronounce that. Zidis. Up loss. 134. And then the go around. Yeah, we're going to be needing that one, aren't we? And then back to Aspis. And then around you go again. Alright, I can do that. Oh, hey, Jez, nice one. I'm glad the livery tutorial was helpful. Um, interesting, I've had a few comments on that one recently, only in the last few weeks, people saying that the the paint kit that I sort of based the whole tutorial on has been upgraded and therefore they couldn't follow the tutorial anymore. I haven't had a chance to actually delve in and see if that's true or whether it's just people being lazy. So I don't know if you're able to shed any light on that. I should probably get in contact with Ground, actually, shouldn't I? I'm just sat here talking to you guys, and actually there's a whole Vatsim network out there that I've yet to say hello to. 121755. Say hello, shall we? 
Oh, there's one other plane here. Three, two other planes here. Oh, I see. So you just took the took the information from the tutorial, Jez, and applied it to something else. Well, honestly, if you did, that's awesome because that's kind of what I wanted. I didn't want people to like fixate on every single detail of that specific paint kit. I wasn't really showing you how to paint an A320. I was showing you how to paint anything in Blender. Um, because the same methods that I used in that tutorial, I've used for the Phoenix, I've used, well, an old version of the Phoenix I've used for the ATR when that came out. So I was really sort of trying to teach Amanda fish, if you see what I mean, rather than very very specific about the a320 but a, a lot of people i think despite me saying that in the video i think a lot of people missed missed that completely that's cool that's cool that um you're able to apply that to a different plane that's wicked all right we've got information bravo on board now that's good because i was about to call and say we've got alpha Jolly good. So we're on one, two, one, seven, five, five. I really need to get a little radio panel in here, to be honest. But that Logitech one doesn't work so well anymore, does it? I think there's a workaround with SPAD. Oh, nice freak! They fixed it. Wicked. That's good news. Right, I'm going to uh, phone ahead now and get my clearance from Edinburgh. Hopefully I don't make a mess of this like I've made a mess of most other things in the last 48 hours. That's fine. At least it'll make for good content, I suppose. Good. Right, let's go. Edinburgh Ground. Good morning, Air Not Eight Two Eight at Stand Two Three. Information Bravo on board. Aircraft Type Seven Three Seven Eight Hundred requesting IFR clearance to Lelystad, please. Air Not Eight Two Eight, Edinburgh Ground. Good morning to you. You are cleared to Lelystad via the Talastic Charlie departure. Support three three seven four. Information Bravo is current. Unit has just changed to one zero one four. TLA 6, Charlie, departure, Squawk 3, 3, 7, 4, and yeah, we've taken note of the updated QNH 1014, Airnock 828, thanks. Airnock 828, Jerry, that is correct. 1014, lovely job. Could you all hear that okay? Is the Is the volume good? Hopefully it's okay. Hopefully it's okay. Right, what am I doing? What am I doing? God. <laughs> it's hard work this morning. Okay, let's just stick 160 up here. And let's get this out of plan. Get it back into map because we're happy with that now. And let's get rid of... What's my runway heading? No, 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 no. I'm being really blind. Where's the runway heading? Obviously, it's going to be near enough 2 4, isn't it? But I would have thought. Is it not on the chart? Probably is on the chart, isn't it? I'm just being really, really stupid. What is wrong with me? This bodes well, doesn't it?
two four one. That'll do. Two four one. We'll do initial climb six thousand, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, Jez, basically with the Phoenix, everything works. Like it is, it's the gold standard, really. Um, fly by wire, I know, I, it's, I haven't flown the fly by wire in a while. And Hello, broadcast information Charlie is now current QNH 1014. That's information Charlie, QNH 1014, over out. Uh, yeah, so. You just confirm. Ground, good morning. Shuttle 9 Whiskey Stand 6A320 with information Charlie requesting I for clearance to throw. Shuttle 9 Whiskey, Edinburgh Ground, good morning to you. Clear to London Heathrow, Gotham 1 Charlie departure. Hawk 3265. Clear to Heathrow, Gotham 1 Charlie departure, Squawk 3265, Shuttle 9 Whiskey. Shuttle 9 Whiskey, correct. Right, what was I doing that for? I don't know what I was doing that for. Okay, I think we're all good up here. Let's uh, set my squawk. Three, three, seven, four, wasn't it? Three, three. Ah. Seven, four. Hey, Bagwas, how you doing? Yeah, I think, uh, Jez, if you, you were to use like the development build or one of the non-stable builds, I think it's the dev build, you'll get some form of VNAV. Um, I, it's my prediction that when the A380 launches, it will probably launch with VNAV, at which point it will be backported into the A320 as well. That's kind. Of, if I was a dev in their position and I've got a background in development work, that's what I would do. So that's my two cents for what it's worth. Okay, so takeoff's all good. <coughs> Our route's good. Our cruise is good at three. Let's go three seven zero. I'm not doing three nine zero. And init ref's all good. Legs are good. I think we're pretty much good to go, to be honest. Morning, Colin. Nice to have you in. Thanks for coming. You've come on a particularly bad day. I'm uh, recovering from a bit of a bug, and I'm. Just, nine whiskey request push and start. I'm just feeling really stupid today. Nine whiskey stand six push and start approved face east. But push and start approved face east. Shuttle nine whiskey. The content should be interesting, I suppose. All right, let's get seatbelts on. And let's get ready for departure, shall we? Let's get our anti-collision light on. Let's get rid of... Yeah, parking brakes are on, that's good. Let's get rid of our chocks. Get rid of ground power. Get rid of chocks. It's all fine up here. Happy days. So we've got still got the uh, the door open. No, nope, we're all closed up. All ready to go. Let's see if we can get GSX lined up to sort us out with a pushback. Being awful slow this morning, if it is. Oh, GSX. Why do you test me? You know, some days I'm just tempted to uninstall it and download that um, new pushback app from Aerosoft. What was the push bar tool back? Push bar tool. What are we saying? Push back tool bar app. Oh man, 
GSX with with Halberd. Oh. So we're due to push back in the next seven minutes, so we're okay. Um, also, 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 um, we are running on New Sky today. I need to mention that. I haven't actually mentioned that on the on the stream or on the channel, really. I mean, I made a community post the other night where I mentioned it right at the end. Um, but then when I actually viewed the post on my phone, YouTube actually cut off most of it, and it was in the read more bit, so I doubt many people did read more, because um, I normally don't. I was just basically complaining that I'd been sick. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have a VA on New Sky. So if uh, any of you out there that are New Skyers or VAers, I suppose, feel free to look us up and, yeah, apply. We I've set a minimum rating of 8.0. So for those of you that don't know, on New Sky, as a pilot, you have a rating. And obviously every flight you do contributes to that rating and you then uh, your ratings that you do with each airline contributes to the overall rating of the airline so for that reason i've said basically we want pilots that are an 8.0 or higher so if you're an 8.0 or higher feel free to head on over to new sky and come fly with us it's early days we don't have a ton of stuff gsx seriously you're starting to really annoy me um it's early days we don't have a huge amount of routes because obviously at this stage there's only like three of us in there and if I were to like import about a thousand routes then they all come with a daily charge from the associated airports and then your VA makes no money so it's kind of you have to start small and grow and grow and grow so part of the challenge is to grow it at the rate at which you're acquiring pilots so there's stuff to do but there isn't too much to do and there's enough planes because you have to lease the planes and then that comes off your money and it's quite involved it's really cool actually I like it a lot but it does kind of give you more of a reason to fly sometimes and then it also gets rid of that oh where shall I fly because it tells you where to fly it's like there's a route from here to here it needs flying fly it basically so goody gum drops okay so I'm going to have to use the built in pushback thing aren't I to do this how on earth do I do that pushback okay I think you have to select a tug don't we there it is, look. Can I hear another flame? I could for sure hear another plane then. Is that actually me? Okay. Let's uh, request push and start, shall we? I'm going to tell New Sky, actually, that we are about to make a start. What? I don't know what's going on. Oh, I don't know. I'll figure it out in a minute. Such a good day today, guys. <laughs> hey, El Pepino's in. Party started now. Welcome on in. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So we're probably going to be told we're facing... What are we now facing? Sort of... West, aren't we? No, we're not. We're going to be told to face west. Shuttle 9 Whiskey request taxi. Atlanta Whiskey, taxi holding point Delta 1 for runway 24 via Echo and Alpha. Runway 24 Delta 1 via Echo and Alpha, Shuttle 9 or Whiskey. Oh, hot mic. Our station calling Edward Ground, readability is about one I can just very faintly here in the background. I think it's KLM uh, 9024, but uh, just check your mic and just try and increase your volume if you can. Yep, the minute uh, I spoke to you, I uh, saw my uh, mic in front of my mouth, but on the top of my head. So again, uh, KLM 924 with information Charlie at 10 8, we're type uh, 738. 
Hill and Manor Street Fighting with Graham. Good morning to you. Don't have a flight plan for you yet. It's not my morning. Oh my god. I will uh, file it right now. <laughs> oh, this is why I love that sim. Morning, Tony. Bad was interesting. Um, Freak was just saying actually that ground handling's been made a lot better yeah, in the last squad. update. We're ready. Okay, then, Nancy, for Roger. You clear to skip all Amsterdam uh, via the Tala 6 Charlie departure. Squad 3526. Information Charlie, QNH 1014. Tala. I said TLA, didn't I? Okay, let me ask for Amsterdam. Tala 6 Charlie departure. Squad 3526. And QNH 1014. Okay, let me ask for Okay, then, Nancy, for correct. Air not 828, stand 23, request push and start. Air not 828, stand 23, push and start approved, face north. Push and start approved, face north, air not 828. Okay, north, I'm going to write that down. Which is basically. Atlanta whiskey, no severe HTC, I'm afraid. Mom is Unicom, one, right. two, two, definitely. Have a great flight, bye bye. Over to Unicom, thanks for the service. We'll see you next time, Shuttle Nano Whiskey, bye bye. Yeah. Good morning, Golf Echo, Kilo, Kalima, is a Sears SS50 on the UK apron. Information, Charlie, can H1014, Clinton, please, Glasgow, please. Golf Echo, Kilo, Echo, Lima, Evergrande, good morning to you. Clear to Glasgow by the Grice 3, Charlie, departure, Squawk 0747. Clear to Glasgow, Grice 3, Charlie, departure, Squawk 0747, Golf Echo, Lima. Golf Echo, Lima, correct. Alright, so I'm going to do standard L style. Turn those to the right because that's going to be heading north. Let's uh, see if it ground. works. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Okay, AP bleed on. Packs off. Vincio, yeah, there's um, a video on the channel uh, from, it's a little while ago, about a year ago now. In fact, if you, do, if you go back, uh, there is sort of a video that's kind of like that too, um, where I recently got a 5800X 3D. with a 4080 Super, which I kind of talk about it a bit there as well. But yeah, the uh, if you just type in like Air Not graphic settings, it will be the first one you see. It should be like the thumbnail should be a picture of a plane's wing. Right, what's going on out here? Come on. I'm going to get a fine. Come on. You only start plus or 60 minutes from departure time. It is departure time. Oh, I've probably messed this up, haven't I? At the element for the carpet ground, bottom. Kelly 92428, push and start a pre-face east. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Uh, Kelly 94. Ah, release parking brake. Brakes released. Brakes released. Here we go. Let's go. Right. Engine two into ground. Are we going to get some N2? Yes, we are. That means I've done something right today.
Okay, so we're three minutes off schedule at the moment, but that's okay. Aha! Yes, I do want to start the flight. Thank you. Thank you, New Sky. Okay, so not, not the best pushback in the world, but that's okay. GSX failed us, so we had to rely on uh, on what we were given from the built-in PMDG one, but that's alright. I'll tell you what, if PMDG and Phoenix could... If they could just um, link into GSX profiles and just do awesome pushbacks, I don't think I'd ever use... GSX again, to be honest. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute and release from guidance on your right. Have a good flight. Okay. Fuel for engine one. Set flaps to five. Really good. Okay, let's get our flight directors on. Let's arm L nav and V nav and the auto throttle. Let's take power from the main engines. Go for Echo Kilo Lima, request taxi. Go for Echo Kilo Lima, taxi, holding point Delta 1 for MA24 via Mike and Alpha. Delta 1 MA24 via Mike and Alpha, go for Echo Lima. Jolly good. We shouldn't have any warnings. No, we don't. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's do our brakes to RTO for ejected takeoff, just in case. Just in case. Oh, they've always sounded like that, Fruit. Okay, let me just uh, get the charts up. Well, not the charts, but the map up so you can see where we're going to go. Air 0828, ready for taxi. Eight to eight, taxi for now, holding point, golf one, via golf. Golf one, via golf, and not eight to eight. It's just down here, it's fine. Alright, let's get the old cam on. And we'll, uh, mosey on down. Okay, parking brakes off. Give you guys a bit more volume. Okay, left nine two four. Press next. Okay, left nine two four. Taxi holding point Alpha one five by Fox Truck and Alpha. Uh, taxi holding point Alpha one five by Fox Truck. Okay, left. Yeah, you hear it much more through from the. Custom views where you're sort of near the wing. And at 828, you can continue taxi now. Holy point Delta 1 for runway 24, via Golf, Mike and Alpha. Delta 1 for runway 24, via Golf, Mike and Alpha. And at 828. Alright, I'm not really familiar with this route, so we're doing Golf, Mike, and Alpha. Okay, that's fine, so let's... Go 
Yes, I can leave enough for the HTTP. I'm afraid none of you can come on to YouTube, definitely. I'm very sorry to go. Bye bye. Yes, so, Echo Lima, thank you. Bye bye. Second left, and then right. I can do that. That's fine. That's fine. There's KLM. KLM 9024, give way to the Boeing 737800, uh, pulling out of uh, Taxi Mike, and then continue to Holy Point Delta 10824 by Alpha. Yep, give way to the 737 on the right side, and then uh, uh, Alpha to Holy Point Delta 1, KLM Making a mess of that. Can okay, eight two eight no further eight two three. I'm afraid, Mom, you only come one two two. Definitely, I have a great flight across to the Netherlands. Bye bye. One two two decimal eight. Thank you very much for the service. I'm not eight two eight. So I've got to check where we're going. Okay, we're just going to hold here at Delta 1. Is there anything coming in? Adam Shafik, Gulf Echo, Yellow, Gulf, 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 on the uh, Christ, three trolley departure, Adam Shafik. Jolly good. All right, let's get our TCAS onto Tara. Engines continuous. Let's get our strobe light on. I think. I think we are good to go. Edinburgh traffic, Air 828, lining up runway 24, Edinburgh traffic.
Let's get out of here. Let's go to... Let's go to Lalisad. Let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. All right. Holding it on the brakes. Head over traffic. Air not 828. Taking off runway 24. TLA 6 Charlie departure. Head over traffic. Okay. Hold it on the brakes. Bit of forward jet pressure. We're doing a flex takeoff. knots. Release that pressure on the yoke. That's the perfect line of body. That's great. Line of real line. Gear up. Oh, it's another pilot. <laughs> I will answer them once I get autopilot enabled in just a moment. Edinburgh traffic, air not 828, airborne 2,700 feet. Edinburgh traffic. Let's get flaps up. So I think I'll hand fly this first turn, then we'll get autopilot on. I thought that was going to be like Scotland Centre or something coming online, beeping me then, but it wasn't. the engines gonna hold us at 6,000 feet I feel like the flight directors are a little bit like you can't you don't really want to be following them like absolute because you'll be going up going down going up going down you almost need to use it more of a as a guide than than like an absolute thing I don't know I could be wrong could be lack of experience on my part Alright, I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to go direct to D344. Mike. And let's get autopilot on. days. So VNAV's on, LNAV's on. Let's just resync our heading bug to 148 in case we need to go into heading select mode or whatever for any reason. So we're going to stay at 6000 until 
TLA. Then we're going to head on up to flight level... Well, we're going to try and get to 370. We're not going to make it. Good. Cheers, Jazz. Take it easy, mate. Uh, Brian, sorry what you're saying. Strange only ground when you did ATC, ATC did all three. Yeah, so I think, isn't it? Am I right in saying that you need a lot more training from Batsim to do, like, tower and then center or departure or whatever? So I think you're more like there's more ground controllers to go around than there is tower. Is, is that fair to say? Oh, behind the skies. Congrats on 10k. I remember you hitting 3k. Yeah. I remember you being a complete pain in my backside too. Yeah, there wasn't any model matching on that vision jet, was there, Alex? Right, let's respond to this guy that messaged me on Vpilot saying, if you don't mind me asking, what airline is that? Okay, TLA's coming up. All right, three, seven, zero, please and thank you. Let's go. Uh. There it goes. You can hear those engines ramping up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, Duxie, I'm not sure if that comment was meant for me or someone else in the chat. Sorry, I was sort of paying attention to the takeoff then. Um, but how much money did I spend on my flight sim setup? Oh, God, I don't know. Depends when when you start and stop measuring. It just feels like it's been a continual build-up. It's, it's not like I put it all in the cart and pressed order, if you see what I mean. It's like I started with the stick, then I bought a throttle, then I bought some rudder pedals, then I bought a yoke. Then I upgraded the PC, then I did this, then I did this. So you see what I mean? It's hard to quantify it, really. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, the yoke, I think I paid about two... I got a deal on the yoke. I was going backwards and forwards on the yoke for ages. Um, so... It, 
it, it just felt a bit too much. And then I saw it, I got a deal on it at 210, so I thought, yeah, actually, that's not bad. I think it's 210. Um, throttle unit was like 90. The add on unit was another 90. I just recently got that. Uh, I think probably the next thing I'll upgrade is the TV. I feel like the TV is holding me back in quite a significant way. TV and maybe a dedicated streaming PC might be the play. Oh no, I'm going to get penalties, aren't I? Because I was looking out the window and I didn't turn off my lights. Ugh. Silly boy. Silly, silly boy. Never mind. Right, let's do a weather check in the Netherlands. Okay, the wind is getting better, because that was at 25 knots as a crosswind earlier on today. As I was setting up the stream, I was like, oh no. Then it went to 20, now it's at 15. Fingers crossed, by the time we get there it'll be like 10. Oh man, I'm going to get loads of fines in New Sky now because I'm too busy looking out the window talking to you guys and not turning lights off and setting Q&H pressure. What a fool. What a fool. Oh, never mind. Good. Good progress is being made. No, Alex, there's no message from Scottish. It was actually um, another pilot. So in the same way that like an ATC can message you saying, please contact me on whatever the frequency is, just if you see another pilot, you can just message them directly like a DM. So it was another pilot that was taking off from Edinburgh. Um, I think there were two behind us. Um, I think basically heard on the frequencies, I kept saying like, air not this, air not that. So he messaged me being like, what's air not? So.
Lovely. So, here's a question for you all. How would you feel if my if the default view on the screen was like this? Just throwing it out there. goes the coast. Is that Newcastle down there? Fairly certain it is. 2001 to 2005. Is that the last time you were on Vatsim, Brian, as a controller? Newcastle Airport is down beneath us. <laughs> Not that we can see a damn thing. I feel like that's Newcastle. Or is it Sunderland? This is where we need Mackham. Not really a fan. Fair enough. Only reason I only reason I, I mention it was with all, all this talk of the like the win wing and the mini FCU. You know, it got it got the uh, the cogs turning a little bit. Thinking if I was going to make like a little mini cockpit for myself, it would then be really weird if I made had like an FCU thing and I had little PFDs and NDs going on on a separate display, maybe mounted behind a piece of wood or something to look like a you know to, if I could get a piece of wood cut to this sort of shape cut some holes out for a, a PFD and an ND and maybe all this clobber as well then I could get like the wind wing um, FCU sort of up here Make a little glare shield. And then if you had all that, if I had all that in front of me, and then on the telly in front of me, I also had the entire thing again, but on the screen, it would just be really weird and pointless. So from my point of view, that would be way better. But then, of course, you can't see a thing, can you? You don't know. You can't see what the instruments are doing. You, you know. So then I thought, well, what about an ultra-wide monitor? Because then... Um, if I was to run an ultra wide and not crop it left and right, obviously you then have like a letterbox effect, almost like when you go to watch an IMAX movie on your TV, you get the bars top and bottom. So if I were to move the sim up to the top, so we had quite a big black bar at the bottom of the screen, um, I could pull out the PFD, the ND, and sort of do squares along the bottom like PFD over here where the map is maybe have the ND over here maybe have the map over here and have a fourth one for like cameras and stuff so you would still be able to see everything um, don't know, I don't know, it's just a thought one of those things where it could cost a lot of time, take a lot of money, and then you actually do it, and you're like, yeah, I don't like it. That's what bothers me.
So I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, wing views would still be fine. You imagine we'd have the wing view, and you'd still be able to see the PFD, the ND, and whatever else I decide to show at the bottom. I mean, obviously, there's going to be parts of the flight where I'm probably going to need to press some buttons somewhere. Yeah, Mike, it's a hardware issue on my end. So I've got... Um, it's because my uh, levers... I've got it set to the wrong um, thing. Uh, what do I mean? What do I mean by that? It's constantly sending a gear up signal because it's in up. I think I can change it. I think I can. All right, so when is top of descent? 22 to top of climb. Yeah, I feel like I could go to a, an awful lot of bother with making a um, mini cockpit where actually it would it'd be great for me because I'd have all the toys and stuff here to play with, but actually for your experience, it could actually degrade it. That's what worries me. And ultimately, it's your experience that matters more than my own, if we're being completely honest. Because I don't really fly for myself. Oh, that sounds weird. I do... Obviously, I fly because I enjoy it. But the only time I fly is when I stream. So I don't have a lot of time. So if I'm going to fly, I'm going to stream. Therefore, it needs to be right, if you know what I mean. For you. Like, I would love... I would love to fly with VR. If it's just me sat here, on my own on a Tuesday evening, pleasing myself... I would love to fly a VR, but I feel like it would be such an awful stream experience. Like, with cameras shaking around every two seconds, me looking up here, me looking down there, turning around, and the camera doing like a 360, and it would just be awful. Awful, awful, awful. We should have taken off from Gatwick. They had tower on as well. Never mind. So I think we're going to be Unicom all the way. looking at map.fatsim.net but we got nothing all the way there there we go at this top of climb which then means top of descent is 100 miles away. Fine. So it's quite cool, actually. When we came back from Rhodes last week, it was my first time in a, a Neo. A320 Neo. A surprisingly different feeling aircraft as a passenger, just from the point of view as a passenger. Very, very different. 
Like the takeoff felt way more graceful, you know, just on the on the CEO on the way out, it was uh you know, you really felt like the thing was screaming its way down the runway, like go, 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 giving it everything. Whereas the Neo much more controlled, much more chilled, just yeah, you know, obviously you've kind of felt the thrust and it was way more just quieter, more graceful. And all, and all the way back as well. Nice plane though. It was a nice plane. Albeit we had a broken cargo hold. So that's okay. We'll let it off, shall we? Right, gang, I need to very quickly pop back into the house. I will be two or three minutes. Enjoy the views.
All right, I'm back. No calls from any ATCs, so that's got to be good. Yeah, there's just nothing on, is there? Nothing on. This time of day is always a bit ropey, though, for Vatsim. Isn't there, like, a network in the US or something where it's, like, paid? Hey, Juggle. Yeah, I'm sure there's like a network similar to Batsim in the US where you pay every month for it, but they sort of guarantee coverage in a defined area. Oh, Brian, yeah, the weather in Rhodes was nice. It was like basically 25 degrees every day we were there. It did rain for like 10 minutes on one day, but honestly, it was kind of a novelty. Now, for me, 25 is just right. I don't, I don't do well in the heat. I mean, you could argue that 25 is a bit much for someone like me, but I wouldn't have wanted it any hotter, let's put it that way. All right, 34 miles to top of descent. Let's uh, check the legs. Basically all the way down to 2,000, aren't we? Plus 1,7. Yeah, fine. Whoop. All right, I'm just going to put in 2,000 up here because we're on Unicom. We can do what you want. One of the very nice features of the Boeing is that you can put in 2,000 feet up here. And the moment it crosses the top of descent marker, it will just gracefully take us down to 2,000, obeying all the restrictions at all the different waypoints on the way down, and we don't have to do a damn thing, and I love it. Pilot Edge. That's it. Thank you, Mike. getting fires. Damn. That's not good. Yeah, it's quite nice on our hotel. Um, managed to spot the hotel from the plane because it's it was a fairly big hotel. It's got a big dome as part of it with a pool underneath it. Um, so we could see that on the way in, which is quite cool. But it also meant that when we were at a hotel, sitting on the balcony, I could do plane spotting, which is amazing. Nice tiny little airport though. Very tiny airport roads really. So much so that the passport control... So we got off the plane and the plane obviously pulls up right to the gate but you still have to get a bus like 20 feet because you have to cross a road which they're not happy with you crossing by foot. Um, and then you basically we started queuing you know where they put out like the little tapes on the little bollard things they make like those snaking queues you start going through those more or less right next to the tarmac and then you finally work your way into the building where the queue continues for like a couple more rows of the snaking and there's a little couple of passport control booths. And then it's... Literally, you're at the luggage. And then the, the next door is the, the road outside. 
really small airport for, for that. It was nice and quick to get through. Oh, there's a fire in Benissa. That sucks. It's pretty there as well. It's very dry though, isn't it? But I do, when I think back on it, like when we stayed in Benissa, it was very dry. That'll be top of descent. I think I kind of find every year when we go on a holiday around this time and we take a flight. I, the one thing that always stands out to me when I get back and I get back into the sim, it's the sounds. The sounds just are nowhere near what they are in real life. I think what the sim fails to capture, especially in a view like this when you're next to the wing, is just that kind of rumble that you get. Alright, weather check. Has it gotten any better? No. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, wow. um, yeah, so here we are at Roken. Topper uh, HDR Eknon. And then we work our way down. We'll work our way in, rather. Let's actually. That's a good point. Let's get the winds forecast request the winds because I did download those earlier from Simbrief let's load those in and execute Okay, so we're now back on profile, near enough, and then hopefully we'll start to pitch up, which I think we are, and then, then maybe hopefully get that speed under control. We do have a tailwind, so that is going to impact us quite a bit. Oh, welcome back, Jazz. Yeah, just saying about sound, in that I think that's what the sim doesn't quite capture. I felt like just like that really the the the, the rumbles that you get, that really sort of deep sound you get when you go on a real plane. Give ourselves a little bit of speed brakes.
Right, let's get rid of the speed brake, see if uh, it can hold it there. Might be able to. Is that land? No, it's not. Is it? Oh, I don't know. Probably not. I thought I just got a sense of it, but could be wrong. So, what do we think for the landing? What are the odds? We are going to have a crosswind. And I don't like them. I'm not very good at them. But we'll do what we can. So it's going to be sort of coming at us from the left hand side, so we're going to be crabbed, nose pointing left I believe as for our departure of the runway Sierra 2, Sierra 1 would be my guess Let's do a landing on route calculation, zero, 05, flaps 30, packs on, anti-ice off, auto brakes 3, VREF add 5, import the weather, calculate. Flaps 30, auto brakes 3. Plenty of time. I never flew the Vulcan. Never flew the Vulcan. I'm not sure how well that would go down on the channel as well. I feel like after the Chinook, I've maybe learnt my lesson a little bit on that. Because Orbex reached out and they were like, hey, we'd love it, love it if you would you know, check out the... Yeah, they were like, we'd love it if you check it out on the channel. Um, look, you know, try it out. And I thought, great, you know, something different. That'd be great. People might like it. People did, people did not like it. At all. Morning, Simon. How you doing? Yeah, I definitely learnt my lesson with that. Stay in your lane. Like, the views on that Chinook video just were terrible. Still, we learnt our lesson. How's things, Simon? You all good? Am I back to 100%? Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I'm doing all the stuff that I would normally do. I just feel way more tired having done the stuff, if that makes sense. still not particularly eating very much I just it's weird like I made some dinner last night for everyone and we sat down to eat it and I was like yeah I'm so hungry and I took like four bites and I was like oh I'm full don't want any more yeah I'll get there all I can say is just thank goodness we made it home from roads in time because had it been one day later or earlier flipping out 
on the day you're due to check out, you get sick like that. That's not good. Could have been a whole lot worse, especially with two little kids, because they, of course, both got it. Not fun. Heard from other streamers, people don't seem to want to watch stuff that's too complex. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think with YouTube, the thing is, once you build an audience that wants a certain thing, or has become used to a certain thing and likes it and therefore stays for it, it's quite hard to throw something different at them and expect it to perform well. Because they're kind of like, well, I don't want to watch that. That's not why I'm here. So they don't. And the way YouTube works in a big way is it will look at who um, who out of your subscribers, your regular viewers, watches the video. If a good portion of them do, and they watch a fair chunk of it, that's a pretty good signal to YouTube that oh, this, is, this is a good video. Let's recommend it to a load of people that aren't subscribed. But may may be interested. I mean for me personally, I felt like I had a great time flying that Chinook. Fantastic product. Really worthy addition to the sim. Super lucky to have had the opportunity to have tried it. So selfishly I had I had a brilliant morning flying it around, recording the video, this, that and the other. Um, but ultimately, I've built this entire channel on flying jets around. A320s and 737s. So, yeah, I guess it shouldn't come as a shock that nobody really cared about the Chinook. Which is kind of sad, in a way. That you kind of get pigeonholed, but... I'm not sure there's a lot I can do about that. Morning, David. How you doing? Hope you all are well. Alright, let's uh, have a look. We are... This is us up here. And... Obviously... Chipple's busy. And we are sort of coming in over this way. Check out Lelistad. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You enjoyed the Chinook. <laughs> I think you're probably one of the one of the few that did, David. You see it a lot with uh, with other creators as well. Yeah, they try something that's a little bit out there, and it's a lot of the time it's like, nah, back in your lane. Cheers, Jess. Take it easy. Yeah, landing might be a bit interesting on this one. Yeah, alright, thanks, David. We're, um, we just got back from Rhodes the other day. But we, uh, we all managed to catch a hideous stomach bug while we were out there, so we're sort of recovering from that. Almost back to normal. Almost. There we go. So, this is us coming in here, down to Eknon. And then we come in down to the south, and then head up round. And then, of course, we've got our go-around procedure here, which no doubt we'll need. Because, look at that wind. 16 knot crosswind. That's not going to be fun, especially in the 737, where when you do the rudder input, to straighten the plane after you've been crabbing on approach, you also have to do the aileron input. Because of course if you are crabbed to the left, so if our nose is pointing to the left of the runway, you would put in right rudder input to straighten the plane as you sort of, you know, 20 foot off the ground. Which then of course uh, 
means that your left wing gets pushed through the air while the plane is rotating that little bit quicker than your right wing which then creates lift which then makes the plane want to bank to the right and you do left rudder input no, not left rudder input sorry left aileron input so on the yoke sort of turn left to counteract it which is fine but what's really nice about the Airbus is that it does all of that for you all you've got to do is the rudders on the Airbus and it's really nice and I really miss it in the Boeing I really do miss that then I guess that's why that meme exists of like an Airbus pilot coming out of a Boeing cockpit claiming that he doesn't like manual labour Right, what is our ILS? 108.55 So let's get that in here 10855, it's recognised it as an ILS frequency, that's good Over the other side Put it in for the first officer That's fine as well uh, The runway course is 046 I'm never sure whether to put that in now or once you turn on to final. Just resync our heading bug a minute. Oh, you joined Vatsim Krasa, nice. It'll get easier, trust me. I mean, I still feel like the new kid on the block, to be honest, and I've only been doing it since, well, I say only, I have been doing it since September, and here we are in April, and I still feel like the newbie. However, that that feeling that you first get, and you're probably feeling that double time right now, is that you just don't want to mess up. Just don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. That feeling will gradually go away. You can do it now. Nice one. I thought you could. Right, thanks. What was it? 046? Yeah. Okay, so we're in a good spot for a, a ILS approach. Ten thousand feet is coming up. So we'll do engines into continuous, turn our lights on. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, uh Dad at work, appreciate it. Why is the landing gear not locked? It's because of my hardware that I have. Um, hang on, let me turn on the camera, you see. So I've got the Boeing yoke and I've got a lever in here. And I've also now got a second lever <laughs> to make things double confusing um, over here on the add-on kit that I've just got for the Airbus throttles. And both of them are up at the moment. And I think the way I've got them bound in the sim is that it's just constantly um, sending a gear up signal. So even if I try to drag it with my mouse, can't do nothing. It doesn't want to move. So I need to fix that in the settings. So that's a me thing. Transition altitude, 3,000 feet. Wow, okay. Why can't I flick out of this now? So far, we're doing all right. Not having any speed issues or anything like that. We're trying to get down to 6,000 feet for Eknon. And you can see here... Our little uh, profile indicator means we're we're totally fine on that front. Can't believe transitions three thousand feet.
Oh, sorry. Yeah, Krasa, I've always, always got a notebook. Always. I won't fly about my notebook and my pen. The other way of doing it, of course, and I kind of thought the other day, like, what if you were, like, in a VR headset or something? What would you do? It's like, well, you've got it right here. So imagine you're on the ground at Edinburgh and they say taxi via Golf Mike Alpha to Delta One. So you could type in the scratch pad, like, Delta One Golf Mike Alpha. That's another way you could do it. Okay, weather check. Still got a crosswind. God oh, damn it. Yeah, so transition level by ATC. Or 3000. Given that we have none. That's fine. Best advice I can give you, Krauser, is just, if you're not sure, ask. Don't do what I did in Dublin and make out that you're fine, thinking that you're alright, and then uh, not being fine. So you kind of got to learn those lessons, I suppose. So is there much around us at the moment? We are all the way up here. There's not really a ton of traffic, is there? Should probably just make a call just to let people know what's going on. Lelystad traffic, NL 828 inbound, ILS 05 arrival, transitioning via Eknon. That is that traffic. Dublin is very confusing. Uh, what happened, I was cut uh, probably show you actually I was told by the controller uh, cross link 4 so where did we land we landed where am I where's, where's Dublin <laughs> really stupid there's Dublin so we landed on runway 28 left I came off on Sierra 5 was told taxi Sierra whiskey 1 uh, hold up hold whiskey one or basically hold at this runway uh, 1634 so I did then the controller said cross runway cross runway which I did then on to hotel one which I did they said cross link four so I was like fine so keep in mind I was here and I was looking at the charts in this view the controller said cross link four so I was like okay so left then right up to link four because I saw that link four was here turns out this is incorrect this island here is link four and what he meant was cross link four, as in just go straight across. And obviously I'd went left, then right. There was a plane here that I almost like was looking head on at. And I had to be very sorry to everyone and just be like, look, I don't know what to tell you, but I've totally messed up here. I'm really sorry. But actually the controller was super cool. He um, emailed me afterwards after I put the video up and drew me a little map and showed me what I should have done which I was very grateful for alright so we're doing a flaps 30 arrival so that's 143 approach we'll plus 5 to that for 148 that's fine and our minimums decision altitude refer to minimums where is the minimums Oh, what am I looking at here? ILS. ILS. 
this. 187. Let's do auto brakes three. We've got quite a way to go yet, so we'll keep our speed as they're suggesting. That still leaves us with a five mile final at 148. Yeah. That's all right. And we will flick our altimeter over to local pressure, which is. One zero zero one. That's one thing I like about the Boeing is that you can quickly dial it in here. It puts it down there, but it hasn't switched us yet. It's getting a little bit dim in the cockpit. Let's get some lights on. Embarrassing disconnection. <laughs> this is the thing, though, but because I make content, I feel like I don't have that option. If I was flying on my own, I'd just be like, yeah, screw it, disconnect. But given that I'm kind of doing it either on stream or on a video, I kind of feel like disconnecting isn't, isn't really on the cards for me. Maybe I should just do it, I don't know. Okay, 3,000 feet coming up, at which point we'll transition to local pressure. You can see here's the plan, look, we're going to be flying base. Lelisad traffic, Air 828, flying base for runway 05, ILS departure, Lelisad traffic. Let it never be said that I don't make my unicorn calls. Interesting airport this though. Um, we're talking to the developer over email and uh, I didn't realise that the idea for this airport was that it was really supposed to take a lot of the pressure off of um, Chipple. Chipple, I should say. Am I pronouncing that right? That was the point. It was, you know, going to be a commercial airport, um, but for political reasons, it never actually happened. So you kind of got like these derelict commercial terminals that just aren't being used, and apparently that's been modelled. Um, the developer modelled that. Okay. But in terms of like GA, it's uh, one of the busiest. 
I think it's the busiest airport in the Netherlands. And in terms of actual gra like movements, takeoffs, landings, it's second only to uh, only to Schiphol. So quite an interesting one, really. Maybe someday it will. Uh, it will actually become more. Lots of wind turbines. Lots of wind turbines. We get a view of the airport yet? Are we going to be able to? Ooh, wrong one. Can't quite see it yet, can we? Isn't this also the place that FS Weekend is held as well? Right, now I want everyone's fingers and toes crossed for this landing, please. <laughs> this, uh, ugh, this could be uh, this could be a bumpy one, all right. Just so we're all clear, get some speed brakes on the go. Okay, speed intervene. One eight five. Keep nibbling away at that speed. Flaps five. Yeah, it could be an interesting one. First flight back after a long time. Because it's not like I did a lot of flying, really, before I left for the holiday. This is my first one back. So. <laughs> okay, let's go 160 until... We're very close. Let's arm the speed brakes. Gear down. Speed set one four eight. ILS captured. Just <laughs> all right. Let's do a little check. So flaps thirty, auto brakes three, gear is down, lights are on, engines continuous. Speed brake armed. Right, everybody. Brace yourselves. Look at that wind. Good lord. Good gravy. Although it does seem not that gusty. So I guess that's something. Right, guys? <laughs> right, shall I take over? Now remember, 
the go around is highly likely. So don't be getting too uh, don't be getting too attached to this one. Don't like this. I am probably going to have to go a bit quiet on you to concentrate on this because, of course, doing two things at once is not my forte. Come on, this would be, if I can nail this, I'll be so pleased. 400. They said traffic air not 828, landing runway 05. Should have done that before. 300. Approaching minimum. Light slope. Light slope. Light slope. Oh, dear, that's minimums. not good. Continue. Let the record show I am not enjoying this. We're below VREF as well. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Go on. <laughs> Lip hack. Lip in hack. Well, that was less than enjoyable. <laughs> Good gravy. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the windsock. Uh, damn. I mean, technically, that should have been a go around, shouldn't it? Because I went below VREF. That's my bad. But we got it down. All right, let's jump off here. Yeah, I let the speed get very much away from me there. very much away from me. Okay, I'm going to park straight ahead here. Are you guys getting lag? Oh no. That sucks. Right at the bit where I want to show you something. Hopefully it will calm down in a minute. Okay, I'm going to see if I can fix the lag. Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. I think what it is, 
um, my GPU is struggling to encode the stream and run the sim, which is rather annoying. Let me let me uh, let me stop the Twitch stream. Maybe that will help. Because we don't care about Twitch, to be honest. Uh, let's turn off this as well. I'm hoping that's going to help things a little bit. Let me know if it settles down. Uh, Brian, I usually do. I've got a button on my stream deck where it records a vertical version of my landing that I can upload to like YouTube Shorts and all that other places. Um, right, how's it now, guys? Is it alright? Looking at the stats that are coming out of my PC, I think it might be better. I'll keep the camera moving. I'll just pan the camera around. And you can hopefully see what's going on and get a sense of if it's fixed or not. It feels smoother as well. The sim feels smoother because it's not trying to run the stream and the sim. I've got to get a dedicated streaming PC, haven't I, really? Because I do have... <laughs> let me show you. I do have... This... My old trusty 3070 lying around. And I also have my old 5600X. So I could very well just build a PC with that quite cheaply. Hopefully the stream's a bit smoother now. If it is, I'd appreciate anyone being able to uh, say in chat whether it is or whether it isn't. There we go. Yeah, that windsock though, damn. <laughs> Look at that. That's blowing. That is blowing. That was a very tricky landing. Very tricky indeed. Let's, um, in fact, tell New Sky that we're here. Can we just close now? Warning, you'll close the flight. Yeah, I want to close the flight. We got a 10. How do we get a 10 for that? I left the lights on for ages. It's still the same, it's still bugged. Are you kidding? That really sucks. Landing analysis. How do we do then? Great touchdown. 1.1 G. 141 feet per minute. Challenging conditions. Distance from threshold is acceptable. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'll take that. We made 13 grand for the VA. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I will take that. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to really, really, really quickly, I'm going to stop recording because maybe that will help as well. Uh, how do I fix this? This is so annoying. Still lag. Oh. This is the part I wanted to show you as well. I wanted to show you the scenery. That absolutely sucks. What if I really quickly stop the stream and restart it? That shouldn't affect... Okay, we're back, hopefully. Is it any better? Let me know if it's any better, we'll check out the airport. I'll just keep moving the camera around, so hopefully you get an idea of movement. See if, uh, see if it's all bugged. looking good from here the 
So let us know in chat, A, if it's fixed, <laughs> B. Slow that camera down a little bit. Is it good? Timo says yes. Okay, good. We can actually check out the airport now. Okay, so I've uh, I've landed. Not entirely sure I've parked in the right place, but who cares? All right, nice. So welcome to Lely Stands. <laughs> so this is obviously a a big GA airport, as you can tell. We've got some static aircraft down here. This is the first time I've seen this, by the way. I haven't like looked at this ahead of time. Um, so I'm kind of this is very much first impressions. We've got some helipads over here. More GA stuff, and again, this is speaking to the developer. It's like this is the biggest GA airport in the Netherlands, and in terms of actual flight movements, second biggest after Schiphol. Schiphol, I should say. Um, anything inside here? Maybe there is. No. <laughs> Aviocom, whatever that is. We're looking part of a fuselage. Wonder what that's all about. Wonder what that building is. Aviocom. So lots of little hangars. I guess there's going to be a lot of like private aviation going on here. But I think the interesting point is what what we were talking about with the developer is that actually this was supposed to be an airport that was hopefully going to take some of the pressure off of um, Shipple because it's just so busy over there and the gates are always full and you know the idea was was that this could be a commercial airport but then politics of course got in the way um, which meant that that didn't happen at my parking <laughs> such a great airline and of course there's a there's an old KLM 74 over here it's a bit of an exhibition piece because isn't this where FS Weekend is held? Oh, look at that. It's so sad they don't fly anymore, isn't it? Really, it really is. Like, absolutely gutting. What's this one over here? So this is obviously like the museum area. Is that a, a Fokker? Oh no, it's done it again. I think my stream's lagging again. Anything in here? No. That's fair enough. So... I'm guessing this would be the commercial terminal, would it be? Oh, it's lagging again. Goodness sake. Oh, this really sucks. This really sucks. Okay, I'm probably going to have to call it in a minute then if it keeps doing it, because I don't know how to fix it. What have we got over here? Is this a dash? Oh no, it's uh, another a Fokker, isn't it? No way, is that the old terminal building? Well, this is a lovely airport. Um, ah, no, look, this is the commercial terminal over here. This is the commercial terminal, or what should have been.
just basically desolate. Politics strikes again, eh? Yeah, just nothing going on. Completely empty. Oh, that is a shame, isn't it? That is a shame. Well, folks, I'm sorry about the lag. I think my uh, encoder is struggling to run the sim and the stream, um, which is a real shame. It is a real, real shame. We'll have to do another flight out of here because I feel like um, I'm not really giving the developer due credit, really, because this is awesome. And all I'm doing is giving a laggy stream. So I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm going to have to call it there, guys, I think. My apologies to Papa Hotel. I will do you another stream from here. We'll start the stream from here, and next one we'll fly back to London or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to start seriously investing in a proper streaming PC, I think, because I can't keep going like this. This is like the fifth time this has happened. Um, never mind. I believe there's an update coming to this airport Thursday or Friday, so actually maybe it isn't the worst thing in the world that we're going to do another stream from here, because... Uh, We'll get that update out, and we'll we'll do a second stream. But thank you all for coming uh, to the stream today. I'm really sorry that it's lagged. Really annoying when this stuff happens. As a streamer, it's just like, it's just the worst. It's so like.